Ah, coffee. Everywhere we look, people are drinking it or lining up to get it or buying expensive machines so they can brew their own at home. Have you ever wondered how coffee became so popular? Would you be surprised if I told you that coffee became a big thing because of Muslims? The word coffee comes from the Turkish word kahve, which itself comes from the Arabic word kahwa. The world's first coffee lovers weren't actually Muslims. They were the Oromo people in Ethiopia. It's said that they've been chewing on coffee beans and leaves for thousands of years. They even crushed the coffee beans and mixed them with animal fat to create their own version of energy bars. What we know from the records of 16th century Muslim travelers is that Muslims were the first devoted drinkers of coffee. Coffee found its way to Yemen through trade with Ethiopia, and there it took on a life of its own. Muslims became crazy about coffee. Coffee was consumed almost exclusively by Muslims for the first 200 or so years of its known existence. It was in the Muslim world that roasting and grinding first happened, and coffee was associated with religious activity. Sufi Muslims drank it to enhance their devotional gatherings and spiritual fervor while chanting the name of God. They also thought coffee could help them stay alert and concentrate during their nights of meditation. Coffee spread quickly to Mecca, Medina, Cairo, Aleppo, Damascus, and Istanbul. By the 16th century, Yemen became the coffee capital of the world. We drink mocha today. Well, mocha was named after a port in Yemen on the Red Sea, which was central to the early coffee economy. Eventually, the Ottoman Empire took over as coffee exporters. This culture of coffee drinking spurred on a whole new social institution, the coffee house. Coffee houses quickly spread all over the Ottoman Empire. People drank coffee, played chess and backgammon, listened to stories and music, and shared news. Coffee houses were referred to as schools of the wise. It was the place to be for intellectual discussion and debate about the arts, science, literature, and politics. Not everyone was happy that coffee houses were so popular. Religious leaders saw the coffee houses as competitors of mosques, and political leaders were concerned that dissent might be stirred up in these gatherings. Some Muslims felt that coffee was too similar to hashish and wine. They were worried that coffee might alter people's mental and physical states. There were fatwas against drinking coffee. And in some places, coffee was actually banned. It was banned in Mecca in 1511, in Cairo in 1532, and in Istanbul in 1578. You can imagine the outrage that caused. Of course, people continued to drink it on the down low, and over time, those pesky bans were overturned. Coffee eventually spread beyond the Muslim world. Coffee entered Europe through the great merchant city of Venice in 1605, and people were suspicious at first. Catholic authorities called it a Muslim drink. People referred to it as the bitter invention of Satan. It is said that Pope Clement VIII eventually intervened. He tasted it and declared that it should be baptized and made into a truly Christian beverage. And those were the beginnings of an attempt to de-emphasize the role of Muslims in giving the world coffee. This thinking persists in writing about coffee to this day. What's interesting though, is that it wasn't just coffee that became a part of European culture. Coffee houses spread too. They overtook the common tavern. The coffee houses in Europe in the 1600s continued the tradition that started in the Ottoman Empire of being gathering places for artistic exploration and new ways of thinking. It was here that philosophers like Voltaire and Rousseau debated ideas like the rights of man and the principles of democracy. Coffee houses helped pull Europe out of the Dark Ages into the Enlightenment. The city of Mocha is no longer the coffee center of the world. Over time, European powers like Holland, France, Portugal, and Spain were able to cultivate coffee in their own colonies, often through slave labor, unfortunately. Today, Brazil is the biggest producer of the raw coffee bean, and Venezuela and Colombia are not far behind. What's clear, though, is that coffee is more popular than ever. The coffee industry is worth $465.9 billion. So not much has changed in the last few hundred years. Lots of us are still diehard coffee lovers. The next time you sip on your morning coffee or you're waiting in line at your favorite coffee shop, remember those Muslims a few hundred years ago who went nuts for coffee and then proceeded to spread their love for the drink all over the world. That's some passion right there, isn't it? I'm Sophia Ali for Let the Quran Speak. If you enjoyed this video, click like and subscribe. And please donate to support our work at QuranSpeaks.com.